I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know. Talking about time lapses in this one. So. Hello and welcome to How to Film Weddings. My name is Nick Miller and today I'm going to show you how to make this. So I'm going to show you how to take your raw still images and turn them into a time lapse video. Uh, if you have not watched it yet, if you have no clue how to set up your camera to do a time lapse, I have created a uh, video that was recently released you how to create time lapses with both an EOS R6, R5, R3, or the Sony A7S III or the FX3. Uh, you can view those videos or something will pop up in the corner or uh, maybe we will put them in the description below. So I am going to jump over here into Adobe Lightroom, edit the photos, then export them, and then I will bring those into Premiere and show you how to do that. So you want to come over here into this folders tab over to the left, click the little bus plus button, add folder, and then uh, I am doing it in this SSD. Here we go, time lapse, and I'm choosing that folder. Now, it's going to take a minute and it's going to put all of the images in uh, that I took. I actually did two time lapses with this one. Uh, one of the camera angles was not very good. Uh, it didn't get the top of the mountain like I had hoped it would. So I actually, after shooting for a long time, I stopped it and I restarted uh, it. So uh, this is this shot right here is where um, I changed the angle. So I'm going to click actually uncheck and then I'm going to click on this one and then scroll down here to the bottom, shift, and then uh, just check all of those, so now they're all check, and I'm going to import them all into Lightroom. So this is going to take a quick moment here, upload all of the photos into Lightroom. So there we go. Now, uh, again, the nice thing about Camera Raw is that there's a lot of play with, uh, you know, the, the photos that you can mess with. I'm gonna just kind of do a quick edit here so you can see what I'm doing, and I'm gonna do the auto stuff because it actually works very, very well. So um, I'm gonna do auto here for the white balance to make it you know, look pretty good. And then I'm actually just gonna click on the auto right here. Uh, I am happy with that. I'm just, just for time purposes, obviously you can go in and you know manipulate all of these, but because we shot camera raw, I had aperture priority on this one so that the light would not change, uh, get darker or brighter, it would stay consistently. I had the uh, white balance set on Kelvin, so it was a consistent white balance throughout the entire thing, and I had my autofocus turned off, uh, so all of these are going to be very, very consistent all the way through. So I have this first image selected uh, and get, I'm in the develop tab. I'm going to scroll all the way over here and click, hold shift and click the last one. Now I click on this sync button and then uh, this uh, setting will pop up and I will hit synchronize. Now, if you go back over to the library, you can see uh, that these images are going to start to uh, auto populate and add that same color correction that I have done uh, to these. There are 500 images or so, so it takes just a couple minutes for everything to auto populate and get done. Okay, so it looks like all of the images have been uh, synced and uploaded and updated so that the correct color has been added to all of them. It took probably about three minutes. Oh, there's a few more that still need the color to be added. Ha, there we go. Um, yes, so we are looking good here. So now what you need to do is export all of these images. So uh, go to file, it's not gonna show it on the screen, and export, and then this will pop up on the timeline. So. Uh, uh, what you need to do, where you want to, where you want to put it, and then I created a uh, South Africa time lapse. Um, 
and then uh, you know custom name so it's time lapse two start number one so all the images are going to be time lapse two dash one again you can do this however you want and then you are going to hit export this is going to take some time to do because it's 500 raw images and they're you know smushing them down to jpegs to make them still look nice so this is going to take uh, a little bit of time i've already done this so i'm not going to do it again Okay, so all of our images have been exported as JPEGs, and now we are going to um, go over into Adobe Premiere. So uh, this is actually a really simple process. Uh, you know, uh, normally, you know, when you have 500 images and, you know, we're shooting at a 23.976 timeline, you know, you want them to all be, you know, one one frame long so it's going to be very very short and to do that for you know 500 images is going to take a while but there's an easy way to get all of these into adobe premiere so uh, i'm just going to go import here all right uh, here is my south africa time lapse and you click on the very first one make sure you click options here options here and then you click on the image sequence thing this needs to be ticked and all you click is the first image. So whenever you click import, now you can see that time lapse 02-1 is in one long sequence. Okay, it's just in one video file. Uh, one thing that I want to do because I'm putting this in, uh, you know, 24 frames per second instead of 30 frames per second, I am going to um, control click on that, modify, interpret footage, and I am going to change this to 23.976, click OK, there we go. And then I am going to go ahead and, uh, you know, pop it in. So here is my whole thing. As you can see, it is 20 seconds long. Uh, just gonna play it back for you really, really quick. Uh, there it goes. All right, so here is the time lapse. It is all of those uh, photos into one long video. Now, as you can notice, uh, as this is going, there's lots of shaking and it's not just from the tree, uh, it, it's moving a little bit. Um, it could be from the wind, it could be, you know, we were back on a deck and just kind of walking around a little bit. So I am actually going to add a warp stabilizer to all of this footage. Um, and I know that that is going to take a minute for it to stabilize. So I'm gonna drop this on and come back whenever we are done. Okay, as you can see, the warp stabilizer has now been added. And as I'm going through it, that shake has been 100% removed uh, because it was so long and there was so much happening. This probably took about 10 minutes for it to stabilize it, but I am really, really happy with the final result of this image. So here is the time-lapse. And now the question is what what can we do with this time lapse? What are some neat things uh, that, that we can focus in on? So uh, the first thing that I would like to do is I'm going to create a new sequence. I'm going to just do it at 1080, uh, you know, 23.976. Um, I'm going to name this time. Whoops. Yep. Time lapse. Okay. And then I am going to copy and drop this in here. Now it's massive, obviously, because it was shoot shot at well over 4K. And so I am going to, you know, just uh, pull this down. Ooh, that's doing some weird things. Just moving it around a little bit. Don't know what that's about. Um, there we go. So now we are at about 35 and that fits my 1080 timeline. Um, huh, that's a, that's a weird little, little effect there. Hopefully that's not gonna still, still happen whenever I export this thing. So, um, it's kind of a first part. So there's a couple things that I would recommend doing whenever it comes to, uh, you know, a, a, a time-lapse video. If it looks really nice, um, you know, you can just kind of leave it playing across the screen and that can look really, really cool. But because we have such a big file size, you know, one thing that I can do here, let's start it right about, let's say about halfway through. I'm gonna just cut that first part off because this is really, really long, okay? I'm gonna start it right about there and I'm gonna scale it at, um, actually, I'm gonna move this 35 down here to the end. And then I'm gonna put this one at 50 
here at the beginning. So as the time lapse is going, it's, you know, zooming out, which is a kind of a cool effect that we have going on there. Uh, so that's one thing that you can do is just using those keyframes and doing that. Another thing that you, uh, you know, can do is you can always, you know, move it. So let's say I'm leaving it at, uh, you know, this 50% and then I'm going to start the position there. And then as I get closer to the top, we're going to zoom it down, scroll it down just a little bit. So here we go. And there you go. So there's a few uh, different things that you can do with the, the time. There you go. So there are a few things that you can do by just messing with a few keyframes and seeing what you can do here. Now, uh, the last thing that I am going to do in this, I'm just going to uh, get rid of that frame and that frame. I'm actually going to move this 50% over here and I'm going to put this one at 38% so that it will go uh, like I'm zooming in. All right. Um, and then the last thing that I am going to do, and I always color uh, the time lapse footage whenever I am in uh, Premiere, just so it can match, you know, uh, the film that I'm doing. So I'm gonna do that. I'm going to uh, add the uh, LUT that I always add here. Okay, um, the exposure, I, I don't know, Jen usually does this, so I'm, I'm, I don't know, I'm just goofing a little bit, I guess, you know, uh, it doesn't really matter uh, for this sake right here. So there, I have added a little bit of color uh, correction to it. Now I'm going to go back over into my editing. And then the last thing I want to do is I actually want to, uh, I'm going to need to nest this because I have warp stabilizer on it. And then I am going to change the time and I'm going to, cause it's 11 seconds long and that's pretty long for a time lapse. And I'm going to change it from uh, 100 and I'm going to go to 350. All right. So now whenever I play this back, the time lapse, is a lot faster. Okay, and I, you know, I, a, a time lapse clip shouldn't be, unless it's something really, really cool, it shouldn't be super, super long in my opinion. So here we go. I'm going to export this and hopefully it will, um, you know, work how it is supposed to. So uh, file export. Okay, the export is finished. Here it is. I'm going to play this for you really quick. And there you have it how to take your raw images, turn them into JPEGs, import them into Adobe Premiere and make a quick little time lapse. I hope that you found this step-by-step -step tutorial helpful into making your own time lapse videos. Is a time lapse something that you use? If so, let us know in the comments below. Thank you so much for tuning in and until next time, we will see ya.